Okay, good morning, everybody. Hope everybody's doing well. Happy Tuesday for those that are joining us live. We've been talking a lot about this idea of um, habits, rituals. And the reason why we're doing this and we're not just running past these concepts is because like everything in life, if we keep at it, it'll start to seep in. If you say that, if you sort of take a look at your life, the fundamental components that you keep on going back and forth with really is your vision and your actions, right? Which is your mind, where you're putting your mind towards the vision. And that's a whole world that we just started and we're going to circle back to. Because in that world includes the feelings you have about life, includes your resilience, it includes the ability to overcome challenges. And then the other side of your life is your hands, is what you do. You can, ha you can be as resilient as you want with regards to your feelings, but if it doesn't translate, you're still sitting around. This interplay, if you just break it all down to its elements between the mind and all that it encompasses and the hands, the body and all that it encompasses is really how we navigate this world. And the more we can get underneath it, the more we can live in these fundamentals, right? This is, you know, there's, there's a great concept about wisdom and knowledge. How as, as, your, as your knowledge increases, the wisdom that you get from knowledge, wisdom is sort of the application of knowledge, right? You can know everything in the world, but... You're not wise if you can't put it into this world. You can't use it. One of the great, one of the great um, manifestations of wisdom is something called distinctions. When you can distinguish between, th between things that other people can't, in a way you're wiser than them, right? If a pediatrician could look at a family and say, cough, 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 and after they all cough, says, I'm going to give these two people strep cultures. And the parents are like, how did you know that? And the pediatrician said, well, I'm a doctor. And I've trained my ears to know the symptoms. And when some, someone can cough in a certain way and how the cough comes out. You ever, like, the doctor, like, puts that little stethoscope on your, on your back. And it's like, breathe. And you're like, what are you looking for? So to a regular, normal person, they can't distinguish between sounds. But a doctor can make a distinction between sounds. So the knowledge that he learned and the application of that knowledge is what makes him better to easier navigate in a world that the parents couldn't. When you go anywhere, right? When you go to uh, California and if it snows ever, they're going to be like, cool, snow. But if you go to Alaska or you go to Antarctica and it snows, they know there's 400 types of snow. Well, how come they don't? Because in that world, they need to know the different types of snows because it snows all the time there. Distinction <laughs> are, a, are a metric of wisdom. The more you get underneath something, the more you see, the, the, you see it for its particulars. And it's when you see things for its particulars are you able to make the changes. Right? There's a huge difference between... I want to lose weight generally and I have worked on my rituals and my daily activities so long that I know myself and I know what foods work and don't work and I know when I can or can't go to the gym and I know what I know all the particulars of this general desire so it's not like I want to or I don't want to light switch on light switch sort of general activity it's the, it's the details of it that I can actually be great in. This is where greatness lies. It lies in the, in the ability to understand the details of your life. And if you're living your life and you're going through it generally, if you don't know the difference between anger and frustration, if you don't know why you're doing the same things every single month, what's triggering you? If you don't understand why, when you walk into this room, you feel this way. 
if you don't know why you keep on not being able to accomplish the things that you want to accomplish, it's because we haven't spent enough time in the world of vision and rituals. Our vision is not clear. We have a general thing that we want. Right away, you can tell somebody, I, this happens to me. Someone will, will, I'll talk to someone and go, what do you want to do in life? He's like, I want to be rich. I'm like, really? Oh, okay. Anything else? Well, I figured I'll go into real estate. Like that's the extent of your analysis. I know a guy in, in the shul. I know a guy in the community that happens to be wealthy. He happens to be in real estate. I figure if I just go into real estate, I'm like, do you know anything about real estate? Where do you go into real estate? What buildings are you buying? Do you know how a building works? Do you know how expensive it is to run a building? Do you know how you actually make money? In real no, I figure I'll just figure it out. It's okay when you're 18 years old, but that's how we go into life. I want to be like this. So what does that look like? I don't know. I guess I'll, that person has it or that person. It's a general sense that I want to accomplish something. We don't make it with general senses. We make it when we are specific. You can begin with it feeling. But if our vision is, is, is general, if our vision is unspecific, and if our actions are unspecific, then we're just, we're just playing around. We're dancing around in our feelings. And that's why so many of us, myself included, love the distractions of somebody else. Because that person who hit that shot or achieved that success, they spent a lot of time in the particulars of their business. The reason why they're successful is because they spent a lot of time in the particulars of their lives. They weren't impatient. They didn't think it was, they, didn't, they weren't too busy to sort of pull the threads out of what they want to accomplish and study each thread for what it stands for. That person who wrote that book or that screenplay, they wrote every single line was tested and retested. That's why it's amazing. That's why it feels like it moves every second. That person who built that thing. Thank you. Big Bub, I appreciate that. My ritual is 9 a.m. Charlie Rye. I'll take that. Thank you. The, what we need to do, and I'm going to finish this soon because we got a lot more to talk about. What we need to do is get very specific about our visions and very specific about our rituals. So here's what we're going to do. I want to do, I want to delve into it today. I want to give you guys a, a gift. I don't know if it's a gift or not. I want to give you guys a, a download. And then I want to sort of build off this tomorrow. So let's really get into it now. The vision, as we discussed, can't be general. What does a specific vision look like to you? So in the book, we, we speak about this a lot. There's an exercise that I found. Um, I'm not sure if I, I spoke about here. I think in the act as if class that we gave a talk, uh, maybe like a week and a half ago. But there's an exercise that I, there's an exercise that I, um, that I found that really made an impact on me. And this is sort of like what it means to have a specific vision. Because we all have general visions. Better mom, better spouse, you know, better, more success here, connected to God. We all have like general visions. But there's a specific way you can create a vision. And here's how you do it. It's called the ideal day. And I'll send this to you at the end, so don't worry about it. If you want, just email me at charlie at charlie harari. Andy will put up my email address. Um, if you're watching the, another platform, charlie at charlieharari.com, I will send you a, um, I will send you um, from the book we did workbooks. And this is one of the chapters in our book. And then there's, we have a, a workbook that we handed out to people. So I'll send you that workbook. So you can actually have something to work off of. The exercise is called the ideal day. And here's how it works. Take a half an hour if you can. If you can't, then you can. And picture a day in the future. Not 10 years out, three years out, six months out. Not too distant where like the whole world can change. 
something far enough where there's change, but not too far. 18 months, a year from now. And what you do is you write out your ideal day. So pick any day, Monday morning, May 19th, 2021. And you write it out like it's like you're writing a journal entry of your day. So that means your brain has to go to May 19th, 2021 and live there in your imagination. So your brain now, your, your imagination now is living in a year from now. You know who you are. You know what's possible. It's only a year, let's say. So it's not anything as possible. And you have to spend some time in this exercise mapping out your day. It's 1 a.m. and I'm waking up. Well, when do you want to wake up every morning? And when I wake up, I do this. And then I do this. I'm going here. I'm speaking at this thing because I wrote a book that everybody's talking about. And now I get to talk about it on the lecture circuit. I am having a date with my spouse because I want to spend more time. And I could do that at nine o'clock in the morning where I'm in my life. At 1030, I am sitting in a conference room for a company that I just bought because I am working hard in it. And I know that I have the ability to be more. Go through, if you can, the entire day. This is when I come home. This is when I go to sleep. This is what I'm doing. This is, and what will happen is if you give it the right amount of time, writing out one ideal day in the future, but really ideal, it'll start to bring out so many of the things that we want to accomplish now, but when we articulate it, we articulate it in general terms. We sort of want to be blank, but it's still general. It's not specific. It's not measurable. It's not, we're not able to figure out the contours of it. By the way, between me and you, I do this a lot, a lot. Sometimes I will, I do this on just, I mean, like we're all close. So I could just share this with you. I do this on birthdays. I do this on major holidays, like a Yom, a Yom Kippur. I do this on secular major holidays, like a new year's. I'll do this. If I ever feel like I'm stuck, like if I ever like I'm in any project and I feel like I just stuck, I'll stop. I'll go somewhere else. I'll take out a pad and I will write the ideal day for that particular thing. And many times I will come back to things a year later and it'll shock me how right I was, how wrong I was, how subconscious I was acting throughout the year because I sort of wrote this that I want to be here and I sort of knew it was coming. How many things that I forgot and then I reminded myself. You see, what happens is if you set a place towards the future, you visualize something, you now create a path to walk towards that's specific. It's not a general path. It's not, I want to become. It's five o'clock in the morning. That's what it says on my sheet. I'm getting up at 5 a.m. I'm jogging every morning. I'm praying every morning. And when I pray, I have my eyes closed and I feel close to God. How do I get there? That's what I'm getting a year from now. I'm going to feel connected to the creator of this universe. I, 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 how do I do that? The, as you live in that moment, in specific, not like, and by the way, you can't write everything. It's an ideal day. It's not an ideal life. Just one snapshot of one day. Just the snapshot of one of your days will bring out so many things that we want but that we haven't articulated into words so that it doesn't move into a place in our minds where we can go out and get it. This, by the way, isn't my idea. I saw this both in the works of a man named Daniel Goleman um, in his work. And I actually saw this in the name of a big rabbi named the Piazetzner Rebbe. He is a famous rabbi that lived during the times of the Holocaust. The shul that I daven in is actually named after one of his most popular works. 
and I read one of his works and it was an incredible book. The, the, it was almost like the journal of this major individual. And this was in his journal. The visual is it. And I couldn't believe my eyes. I couldn't believe it. Here's this holy rabbi, this incredible uh, fire of which my own synagogue is named after. And he's writing in his journal that they published that every year this is what he does. He sets a clear picture of who he wants to be in a year from now. And that clear picture, not general, clear, becomes the person he's working towards. Now, many times you start working towards that picture and you see all the, detour the detours. That's okay. That's called life. We're much worse at predicting the future than we think. We're terrible at predicting the future. This is sort of some of the work of a great man named Daniel Kahneman, a behavioral economist, an Israeli-born behavioral economist. And he writes how biased we are and how bad we are at predicting the future. So we're not supposed to predict to predict. We're just predicting to bring out what's inside us now, what we can work towards. Because this is sort of where we want to be going. But it's hard to get there in the world of being reactive unless there's a picture of us down the block. A friend of mine actually invested in a business, believe it or not, that if you wanted to lose weight, this is incredible. If you want to lose weight, what you would do is you send a picture, a digital picture into this website, and you would write how many pounds you want to lose. And they would send you back a picture of yourself with that weight lost. So you would see a picture of yourself with the weight already lost. And then you just have to work towards it. Now, here's the way this works. And then, I, and then I'll give you those sheets and tomorrow we'll start to build as to what this does for us in general, because we've got to get back to our perspective. There's so many pieces on top of this. If you take the time, and by the way, if you have questions, I'll help. So we're, we're doing, so we're here for. If you take the time, and by the way, if, if you take the time and you get your phone in your hand and you're doing it quickly, like, forget it. This is your life. Companies spend a week in a retreat to plan the year. Mine and your life is more important to us than any company. This is our lives. And if we can't figure out a way to siphon off a half an hour or an hour of quiet time without any distractions to actually write what our ideal day looks like in a year from now so that we know where we're going, how do we expect to get there? Once you have that picture, what you do from there, is you look at that, that list. Look at what you want to accomplish. I want to get up at this time. I want to do this. I want to eat like this. I want to talk like this. I want to be like this. I want to learn this. This is who's around me. This is what I'm doing for a living, right? You could, you could uh, be a little imaginative. And I've achieved success here and it feels great. I'm with this person and it feels great. If you look at your list and you circle one thing that you want to be. One thing. I get up at five. I, I pray with a heartfelt emotion. I jog every day. I go to the, I do this for a living. Point to one thing and then ask yourself, what can I do every day right now to move me one inch closer to that goal? Every day, what can I do? What can I work on today that takes me five minutes that I can put into my life that'll take me closer to that goal? And what you're doing is you are clarifying. You're bringing clarity to your thought in your mind and vision. And you're, being, you're bringing clarity to the actions, to the instructions that you give your body. These two pieces, if you have them in your hands, and you go through your days, this is what I want to get to, this is what I'm doing, and you start to revise these, you start to test these, you start to change these, but through specific feedback, deliberate practice, we're working, we're working, it's, I'm, doing, I'm doing it right, I'm doing it wrong, I can add this, I can take this. These are the two things that we're gonna carry with you every single day of your life.
you know, guide you. I thought I wanted to get up at this time. I actually don't. I need to, that's deliberate practice. I thought it was this thing. It's not. I thought this is why I did this. It's this. I should add this on. I can do this harder. That's called deliberate practice. You're always practicing. You're always revising. But you have to begin with something specific so that you can revise it. Okay, if you want it, charlie at charliehard.com. I'll send you the worksheets. Tomorrow we're going to move on to the next topic of what doing this does outside doing this. Maybe we'll circle back. Um, but for now, let's start working together here to help. Thanks so much for tuning in, making an awesome day. So much of our day really is in our hands if we really work for it. I wish you an incredible day. And with God's help, really can't wait to speak to you again tomorrow. Have a great day.